this is my den. Walk into Amos Jordan's home office and you quickly realize another sword up here which General Eisenhower presented to me. Amos is no ordinary man. This was given to me at Fort Bragg, this uh, paratrooper, special forces. Rather, he's a man that's lived an extraordinary life. Out of the 20 or 25,000 graduates, they only select four or five a year for this award. Amos A. Jordan, or Joe, as he is known to family and friends, was born on February 11, 1922 in Twin Falls, Idaho. The oldest of seven children. His father was a house painter and a farmer. At school, he was the smallest kid in the class. He quickly learned to defend himself. Big kids, the fifth and sixth graders, would uh, get me and another first grader and fight in the schoolyard uh, under their direction and goading. You could say that's where his boxing career started. Later in life, Joe went on to become the 155-pound Eastern States Intercollegiate Boxing Champion twice. Bye whooped everybody my size east of the Mississippi. There was a reason why Joe was so good. If you're gonna go into the ring, somebody's trying to knock your head off, you really have to focus, and so I, I trained hard. That focus in training is what eventually led Joe to his real career, the military. As a senior in high school, a teacher gave him a catalog to the elite military school, West Point. He was hooked and later accepted. Well, it was an intense competitive environment, and I thrive on competition seek out competition. <laughs> That's exactly what Joe did. He thrived at West Point. The first year I was fifth in my class, and the second year I was fourth in my class, and my final year I was third in my class. During his senior year at West Point, Joe was the first captain of cadets. Here he is shaking hands with General Eisenhower, just the beginning of what was to come. But there was love in his eyes for something else. Her name, Mardine Carver or Polly. The two wed on June 5, 1946, the day he graduated from West Point. They would later have six kids, three boys and three girls. Joe went on to receive the prestigious Rhodes Scholarship, get a master's in Oxford, England, and a PhD at Columbia University. He would also teach at West Point for 20 years. Over the years, Joe rose to the rank of Brigadier General in the Army. He retired from the military in 1972, but retirement isn't on Joe's agenda. General Jordan went on to serve in high-level positions in the Defense and State Department, directly advising or working with six U.S. presidents. And I got to know George H.W. Bush quite well. He was always gracious and sent you a thank you note. He was famous for these short thank you notes. He's also traveled the world, meeting one-on-one -on -one with top leaders and dignitaries from various countries. He has lectured widely and authored numerous articles and books. But he's been here for half an hour. Now at 88 years young, He's still seen weekly on BYU campus, where he plays a major role in getting top speakers, including General David Petraeus, who has now become the top U.S. commander in Afghanistan. General Petraeus was one of General Jordan's students at West Point. Very good kid, very bright young man. But in February of this year, still very difficult, the general lost the love of his life. It's hard to express. Polly passed away after 63 and a half years of marriage and two humanitarian missions with the LDS Church. I miss her every day. I, uh, she was a co-author of my life, supporting me, guiding me, raising the children. With her passing, it became very clear. All the prestigious awards and high honors became secondary to what really matters in life. As the years pass, ever more conscious of how important the family is. I have met enough foreign presidents and prime ministers and presidents and senators and what have you over the years to recognize that uh, they're all mere mortals. <laughs> yeah, I'm totally unimpressed <laughs> by <laughs> all this rank and foo for all that surrounds it. So he offers this simple advice. The most important uh, single advice is get your priorities straight and then apportion your time accordingly. A captain, a general, a husband and father, a pioneer of education, health and humanitarian assistance. General Amos A. Jordan, this year's recipient of the Pioneers of Progress Award.